Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. And we are currently emphasizing prayer for Ukraine. I'm Walter Zagarevich. And I'm Nina Zagarevich. And in the other screen, you see a wonderful couple, missionary evangelists. Tell us your names. <laughs> Marge Abram. Tony Abram. <laughs> and of course, we know who they are, and you probably know who they are. They have ministered in over 125 nations of the world, and we are so thankful for them joining us today. And please, folks, before we go any further, press that share button if you're watching on Facebook. If you're watching us on YouTube, please take a moment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have several, but the, the one under my name, Walter Zagarevich, so that, and allow notifications. So every time we're on here, leading prayer, you'll get a quick notification. And if you are able, you can jump on and join with us. So if you're watching us on LinkedIn, let us know you're watching us. And uh, more importantly, join <clears throat> us in prayer. Um, we're doing this live every day at 10 in the morning, Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we do this in English on Mondays, uh, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Fridays we do in Spanish. And um, on Tuesdays, we have been doing Russian. And we've done Ukrainian yesterday mm -hmm. as we were emphasizing prayer for Ukraine. What I wanted to uh, say is that on uh, during these very unique special circumstances, we have added additional broadcasts. And so on Tuesdays and Fridays, besides the uh, foreign language broadcast, immediately thereafter, I come back on here and we do uh, an English broadcast, update. an update on the situation, um, particularly the situation as it relates to Ukraine. Uh, Tony and Marge, welcome. Uh, I'd like you to greet the people, and then we're going to go right uh, to prayer for Ukraine, and then we will continue on. Tony and Marge. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Brother Walter and Sister Nina, we are joining with you, and we've been praying every waking moment and during the day and then during the night if we wake up we are also praying for ukraine and for russia for the the, the soldiers and those that are fighting but many of them do not want to fight but oh we are praying for them we have because we are so concerned about families and those that are left behind uh there to fight we just thank god that he's on our side and he's on the his children's side over there. He's going to be with them and protect them. And he has already. We've been hearing some good testimonies of protection that God has been doing. So today, as we pray and as we stand together, God is hearing our prayers. Yes, well, it's I normally am smiling. Matter, matter of fact, I have been told that I smile too much, even when I was preaching. I remember one church uh, that had about 5,000, 6,000 people, very large church. And I was getting up to preach, and my translator wasn't Brother Walder. As another one said, please, when you get up and when you're preaching, do not smile. Well, that's an impossibility when I'm preaching. I'm happy when I'm preaching. And so 90% of the time, I'm smiling. But the last few days, I haven't been smiling very much. Matter of fact, there's been more tears in my eyes because of what is happening in Ukraine. You may not know this, uh, but Walter and Nina are responsible for a lot of wonderful things that have been done in Ukraine and Russia. I've been praying for the Russians too. I've been praying they'd lay down their weapons. I'm praying that they will refuse to kill their, 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 their brothers. And they're and killing people. I have been praying that God would get a hold of the the president of Russia, Putin, that he would get so convicted that he would have nightmares, come to Jesus, change his way of going, or Lord, take him out of the way, one of the two. And I, as as I've been praying, I know that over the years. 
Uh, I have invested in Marge almost as much as me over two years ministering in Ukraine with Walter in the schools of ministry uh, I've in every major city and t- many towns and the churches there. And uh, I, I've, I know our ministry has been responsible for many, many buildings. Even my mother in the beginning when the walls first came down bought a house in a village for $300. It was converted into a church. It's still going on. And we have bought uh, post offices, uh, museums, restaurants, theaters that have been converted into local churches in the towns and in the villages over the years. We know, Brother Walder and myself, we know thousands of Ukrainian people, Walder more than me. And uh, I spend so much time over there even though I understand a li- had understood a little bit of Ukrainian, I've learned a lot of Ukrainian. I can I can understand when they're talking Ukrainian. I've I heard so much, and we've invested a lot of our life in our ministry there, and in Russia too, and in Belarus, and and in uh, the uh, some of the other countries there, and so it's hard to smile, Walter Nina. It's hard for me to smile today. My heart is grieved, but I'm burdened. And that's yeah, why yeah. I know that you've been put in these last couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, you've been praying so much in this past week. You have been like a house on fire, praying, mm-hmm. asking people to pray with you. And I trust that people are sharing this. And I know that we only come on with you once a week, but I've I've had a few of my own that I've shared. and. And we're praying and people are contacting us and we need, I know in a few moments uh, we're going to pray and we're going to agree uh, for Ukraine. And so I'm asking the people that are, and, and they also have opportunity. You have, I'm, I'm saying to you that are watching and listening, you have opportunity to help. I know that we have sent money from our ministry to to Brother Walter and Sister Nina, and it's it's gone already. It almost immediately goes, and they they don't take the money for themselves and so such a percentage for this and such a percentage for that. They give it for what you designated to go for, and this is an opportunity to do something while it's still getting through to help feed and to help these. And I trust that. God will speak to your heart today. Brother Walter, Sister Nina, I got to turn it back to you guys. Um, I want to thank you, Brother Tony, for sharing that because uh, uh, people do need to be aware of what uh, has uh, we've done there. And it's God's work. Uh, we've been involved. You've been involved. Other partners here in the United States and Canada also in uh, other nations, including Bahamas and especially the UK as well. And we want to recognize those that have stepped up uh, to help in this dire hour uh, for Ukraine. Um, And I would just want to say this, that we are sending help. Uh, uh, Many organizations are trying to help the refugees that have left or are trying to leave the country. We are constant, and that is wonderful. They need every bit of help they can get. We uh, are trying to help the people in the cities that are besieged, the cities that are surrounded, where the worst fighting is going on. We are sending help to pastors to feed people, to get water supplies, in some cases, basic medical uh, supplies, because the situation is very difficult. Uh, Sometimes uh, uh, we have been getting very little sleep because of the time difference. We're in communications Mm -hmm. at different times of the day. Um, It's night here when it's morning there and and so on. And uh, uh, we hear a message, we're okay. We made it through the night. Kharkiv, uh, I remember saying this was the hardest night we had. We had uh, two very hard nights. This was extremely hard. 
And uh, you've seen some of the images uh, on the news of uh, bombing in residential areas downtown Kharkiv. This is the second largest city in Ukraine, only a few miles from the Russian border. We're sending help to those pastors. These are not people we just, uh, um, uh, these are people we know. These are people we've worked with. These are people we've lived with. Yes. And uh, we've stayed in their homes. We've mm -hmm. eaten together. We've ministered together. Yeah. Um, and they are in bomb shelters. They are helping people. Uh, some of them are gathering in the dark and holding a service. I just received a, uh, a small video where they just got together and had a communion service. Some of them, despite all of this, are gathering together as a church. Some of them have fled. Some have uh, are hiding, but many of them are bold. They're there, and they'll come. They come together. They were praying and singing and 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 partaking of communion in darkness, but just praising God despite the circumstances. We want to help those people, and I want to say this: if you want to help, uh, the need is immediate. Immediate. They need the help right now. And uh, you, you may can, want to add that they are getting the help. It's not the just, help is getting it's through amazing, our, but it's going our the help we have sent is <laughs> getting there almost instantaneously. They're Narrow. still able miraculously. They're still able. They have still been able to find food, <coughs> water, and supplies um, to be able to uh, give to the to buy it to give to the people. So uh, that is in itself a miracle that we've been able to get this through. So. So uh, do not hesitate. If you have some hesitancy, do not hesitate. The moment is right now. And that's why you can send a check. If you send a check, let us know what, that it's coming and how much it is. And we'll try to advance that if we can. But be, uh, the reason I say that, because by the time that check gets here, it may be a little late for some of those people. So we're asking you to go to our webpage, Global Vision Ministries dot org and donate through PayPal or Givelify. And yes, we will get a fee taken by them, a small fee, but uh, uh, that, that they do for the transaction, but we'll get the funds immediately and we'll be able to send those funds immediately uh, to these pastors in Ukraine. The situation, um, and I don't uh, need to repeat many things because you're getting the information on the news, I can tell Tell you the information from pastors, from leaders on the ground in those areas. And what you're seeing, the images you're seeing, those are not fake. Those are real. That is happening. Um, and so we're praying for them. And we can also send finances to buy food, to buy supplies. Yes, there are efforts to try to get uh, supplies into some of the cities. Uh, very, very difficult. A lot of the roads have uh, are very dangerous to travel on. You don't know who has control of what road. Uh, the situation is fluid, um, but we are sending the help there. And uh, we're, some of the people that are being helped are refugees within their own city or between cities where they flee one area into a safer city but primarily it's going inside the city where people are staying and living uh, now a lot of spending a lot of time in cold, uh, very damp uh, bomb shelters, basements under buildings. Um, how do we pray for Ukraine? We pray for the believers, for God's protection, for the pastors and leaders that are there, that are ministering to the people that are helping them. We pray for, um, we also pray that for all the people, there are people that are just innocent people that are being bombed, that are being uh, killed. And uh, I, I mean, I, I can't even share with you some of the uh, images that I get with you. I probably would be uh, uh, forbidden by social media from posting the horrific pictures of what's happened to some of the people uh, there. Um, and, but, but, I want to concentrate on something, and that is that in the midst of this, we have testimonies of miraculous protection of God in the city of Kharkov, where five shells fell near where this church meets around that building. Miraculously, not one of those five exploded, yet practically across the street, 
uh, building was just uh, uh, was hollowed out by a rocket. Uh, they felt it right there in the basement under that building and in the bomb shelter nearby. I mean, the, the blast was so bad they could feel it underground. Um, so uh, God has protected people. Uh, there was a pastor that uh, was shot at, but miraculously God protected him and he did not get hurt. Uh, so um, we're hearing testimonies where soldiers are telling Christians that they don't understand how miraculously um, things have happened in cases where they know they don't have the weapons, they know they did not have the manpower, and yet um, when they see things happen that physically, um, naturally speaking, would not have been possible. Airplanes falling out of the sky, uh, bombs not exploding. I mean, you probably have seen some of these images where there's a rocket just stuck in the ground, unexploded, uh, or in an apartment building where it broke through the wall, but it did not explode. Um, that is the protection of God. Yes, it's a malfunction of equipment or, or bombs or whatever, but isn't that the hand of God mm -hmm. causing you to malfunction, causing you not to explode so that more people don't die, so that more children don't get hurt? So, um, so we pray for the protection of the people. We also need to realize this is a spiritual battle. Yeah. The devil hates the church. The devil hates Christianity. And the devil hates what God has been doing in Ukraine and in the region. And it is in this region of e in the region of eastern Ukraine that great revival has been taking place for several years now, in fact, since the war of 2014, many people have come to Jesus Christ. Many new churches uh, have been planted. Brother Tony has helped to buy buildings for some of these church, new churches right along that corridor in the <laughs> eastern sector. And uh, the devil hates that. The devil does not want to let go a territory that he's held for um, for about 70 years until freedom came in the uh, early uh, 1990s. And so that atheistic, communistic uh, 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 spirit does not want to let go of control of the, over the region. I don't mean just Ukraine, but over Russia, over Belarus, over that whole region, because uh, it, it wasn't just a, a um, you know, communism wasn't just a uh, political system. It's a religion. And, um, and, and people were bound. Uh, there was no freedom for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the devil does not want to let go of territory. And yet uh, it is Ukrainian pastors predominantly who have evangelized Russia. It is uh, most pastors in Russia are from Ukraine. Uh, some are from Belarus. And so uh, God has used ministers from Ukraine to evangelize the former Soviet Union, but not just that. There are Ukrainian missionaries now in Africa, in India, even Nepal, in uh, uh, Latin America, um, they're in Asia. So they're, they're in Africa, they're working in different parts of the world, even though it is a poor country. It's not just a mission field, it's a missionary sending country. The devil wants to stop that. The devil hates that. Um, even a region like Crimea, let's take, for example, prior to the Russian invasion, they had sent a missionary uh, to another country or two. Uh, so a very poor region, uh, and, and yet they've sent missionaries from there. Well, when it comes under Russian control, they cannot do that. They cannot send the support uh, to, uh, to those uh, missionaries and so on. So there is a spiritual battle involved here. It is, uh, um, uh, there are different things. There are political forces, there are religious forces, Forces. There are, um, uh, you know, there's a physical war going on, but there is a spiritual battle over the region. That is why we as believers not only pray for protection of people, but we must wage 
spiritual battle, spiritual war against the principalities, against the rulers of darkness of this age that are trying to dominate the region, that are trying to stop the move of God. And so without further ado, as we say, I want to ask Nina to please lead us in a special <clears throat> prayer for Ukraine. And I want to thank you who have joined us and uh, thank you that you are on here uh, with us. Let us pray uh, for uh, Ukraine right now. And I want to say we're not just praying for Ukraine. We are emphasizing Ukraine right now mm -hmm. because they're the ones that are being bombed. They're the ones that have uh, bombs falling on their heads literally right now. And so it's not that we don't care about the other people. We're praying for the other people, but we are emphasizing the people most in need because they do need God's intervention Amen. and protection right Amen. now. Amen. Amen. Father, we come to you today believing for your divine intervention to save the nation of Ukraine from destruction. We ask that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask heaven's angel armies to invade Ukraine to assist the fight against the plans of the enemy. We ask for your divine rescue from destruction. Show us, Lord, your mighty acts of days long ago. May the nation of Ukraine see your awesome power on display and acknowledge that there is only one mighty God in the heavens that they too will glorify your name father we bind and we toward every evil intent coming against ukraine and we bring down every stronghold and every principality exalting itself against the knowledge of god we bind the demonic spirits behind evil decisions to war against the nation of ukraine we speak peace over ukraine we speak freedom over ukraine we speak life over ukraine we declare the goodness of God over the people in Ukraine with provision, deliverance, safety, and shelter as they stand on your promises in Psalm 91. Your word says a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. Father, we thank you for your promises. They prove true. Our eyes are on you to deliver this nation from war and tyranny. We release revival fires, a spirit spiritual awakening in the hearts of the lost all over Ukraine and in Russia so the people will truly be set free. We speak the name of Jesus over Ukraine and thank you, Father, for victory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 You, and Father, we do pray for the entire region. We pray for Russia. We pray for the church in Russia and in Ukraine yes, Lord, that Jesus. they would be in unity yes, in one spirit and that this yes, war would not cause division and fracture and fissure yes, within Lord. your body, but that yes, your body Lord, would recognize unity. what is uh, right and just and would stand in Please unity for the helpless, for those who have been uh, who have been attacked. The Lord God, may they be in agreement and prayer, seeking uh, for peace, seeking for a stop to these atrocities. And Father God, we do pray for wisdom to, uh, to world leaders as they make decisions that uh, regarding Ukraine, regarding the situation, that they would be influenced by you Yes, that they would seek you yes, and your Lord. guidance, and Lord God, who whatever whoever are their advisors, may they give them correct advice, godly Please advice. And Lord, we come against the demonic spirits and forces yes, that yes. influence world leaders, and we bind those Please principalities. We bring down those strongholds in their mind, in those demonic influences that have entered their minds. We cast them down. We arrest them in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus Christ. And we speak Jesus. peace. Yes, we speak revival. We speak blessing into this region and particularly to Ukraine right now. Oh, Father, strengthen your church. God, protect them. Anoint them with your spirit. And in the midst of the bombing, in the midst of the firing and the uh, sirens or the alarms and the bomb shelters, save not just 
tens, not just hundreds, not just thousands, but millions, oh God. Yes, we Lord. pray for a mighty move of God, for we know it shall come. It shall come in what the enemy intended for evil. You will turn around for good. You will turn around for a blessing, oh God. Yes. So for the Lord, your word says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And all those who rise yes, up Lord. against you, you shall condemn. Yes, and so Lord. we condemn the attack of the devil. We yes, condemn Lord. the attack of demonic yes, spirits Lord. that are trying to stop freedom yes, in this region, Lord. that are trying to stop yes, the Lord. preaching Lord. of the gospel yes, in this area. And out of this area to the nations of the world, and Satan we say no in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we release your kingdom, your governance. We governance, we say your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done in Ukraine, in Russia, in Belarus, in Moldova, in Transnistria. In the name of Jesus Christ, yes, in the Donbass region, both on the Ukraine yes, side and the yes, side yes, under separatists, yes, your yes, kingdom yes, come, yes, O oh God. Yes, we arrest yes, the demonic spirits and strongholds that are not wanting to let yes, go. Yes, Father, we pray yes, that you would release yes, the hosts of heaven. Yes, Lord. And Lord, you said whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Right. And so, Lord God, we release. Yes your host, the host of the armies of heaven, yes, O oh God, to go forth and do battle against the, the forces of Satan. O oh God, bringing a peace and bringing a stop to these atrocities in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Praise God. Tony and Marge, I'm going to go to you. Um, I've got some, it looks like some, a bunch of urgent messages coming in from HeartKeep. And um, as you speak, I will just step away from the microphone to, to listen to them. But go ahead, Tony and Marge. The floor is yours. <laughs> the floor is yours. Yes, Brother Walter, Sister Nina, during this time, uh, we must pray for not only Ukraine, but for Russia, for those soldiers. Many of them do not want to fight. and. Uh, for the love of God, there's a couple of verses I wanted to read in Ephesians chapter five and verses one and two. It says, be ye fall therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. And this is the way of love. God tells us to love, even love our enemies. We are to follow the Lord. We are to begin to understand what the love of God is for us and for others and for those that would be enemies of our souls or enemies of the cross of Christ. We just pray for them today and we continue to pray God's love. You know, God shed his love in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And so he's given us his love. He, he has always loved us. He's loved us from uh, before we were born, he loved us. He formed us in his image, and he loves us. And uh, we know that God's love in the Trinity, we see it in creation, God's love. When the Spirit of God moved and created the world, God's love was there. It's eternal. His yes. love is eternal. Oh, and he, he made the foundations of the world, formed it with love because he loved and then he sent his son because he loved the world. He sent his Hallelujah. son to die. He gave the greatest Jesus supreme sacrifice, the greatest sacrifice of anyone. He Amen. suffered and gave himself for us. God's forgiveness and love and mercy he's given to us. Oh, how thankful we should be for God's love. And also because he loves us, he loves those around us he loves the, our, our enemies those are that are against him he loves them with an eternal love praise the lord and and uh, you know there's a few people in uh, that i want to mention what they have talked about love and one was augustine augustine said what does love look like it has the hands to help others 
It has feet to hasten to the poor and needy. Yes. It has eyes to see misery and want. Yes. It has the ears to hear the sight, sighs, and sorrows of Amen. man. Amen. That is what love looks like. And, you know, that's what we do. We love, we love those and we pray for those that are suffering and we're trying to help them. And then another another one I'd like to share is Corey Tan Boone. She said, "There is there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still." Hallelujah. I'll just read that again. There is no pit so deep that God's love Amen. is not deeper still. And then Albert Lee said, "As recipients of God's love, may we be conduits of His love to the." flawed people around us so they too may know that they can receive God's love despite God's love. their imperfectionness. Amen. Let me just read that again. As recipients of God's love, may we be conduits of his love to the flawed people around us Amen. so they too may know that they can receive God's love despite their imperfections. And how true that is because we have been imperfect God, they can see God can save them also. So uh, Proverbs, one more verse, Proverbs 12 and seven, 17 and 17. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity. And so during this time of adversity, there in Russia and Ukraine, God's love is there. And we want to love them and pray for them and stand with them. And do all we can during this time. Yes. And in spite of God's love, uh, the enemy is always fighting. And there is a spirit. You know, a spirit doesn't die. Not until God eventually throws the evil spirits into the lake of fire. And that Hitler spirit, that Stalin spirit, and you go back to all the terrible uh, leaders of the past, uh, Ganji Khan, or from the, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the part of the world, uh, north of China. Uh, anyways, when he was sweeping across the world, that was the same spirit. And this Hitler spirit, this Nazi spirit, I I'm afraid it it's alive today. And it looks like it wants to steal kill and destroy isn't that what jesus said in john 10 10 the thief which is the devil comes to steal he's not just satisfied with that he wants to kill but he's still not even satisfied with that he wants to destroy but thank god jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly yeah. and let me share with you that this Hitler spirit that is alive today very well may be in the life of uh, Putin. Now, I remember in Manchester, England, some years ago, I make it brief, but we, I had two services that day, and uh, I think we had three, if I remember right, morning, noon, and uh, afternoon, and evening. And I was sitting in the home of our dear friend, uh, Harvey, and uh, Glenn and Agnes. And the pastor, assistant pastor's wife came running in and said, you've got to come to our church. You've got to come to your church. I said, well, I was on a, I was on a tour. I said, well, we're going to be at your church later this week. No, you've got to come now. And the reason I had to come, she said was there was a man that came into service that has been now fighting physically with the pastor and, and assistant pastor, my husband. And he says, he is Hitler, my land. Well, I said, let's go. So we ran over and here he was like crawling on the ground like a snake. And to make it brief, I, I spoke to him. And he says, you have no power. That was his reply. You can't cast me out. I lived in Hitler. And I live in, and his name was Anthony. 
And uh, of course, that's my name. They call me Tony, but my real, my official name is Anthony. And I didn't like that. And I and I says I says to him, Anthony, if you want to be free, you can be free. And I says you need to crown Jesus Christ Lord. And I says I'm going to cast that demon out of you in the name of Jesus. And I said in the name of Jesus Christ. You spirit. I don't know if it was a Hitler spirit or not because the devil's a liar and the father of all liars. But I said, this evil spirit, it's torment. You come out. You can believe it or not. It was like someone choking him. And I says, Anthony, make Jesus Lord. Crown him Lord. And he squ- he's fine. He said, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And then he screamed with a loud voice, yes, Jesus is my Lord. Well, the next, on that Tuesday, I think it was, or Wednesday, when I had a service in the church, he was there, his twin brother was there, his mother was there, and they all surrendered their lives to Christ. Well, let me say to you and I, we need to bind the spirit of war, the spirit of destruction, the spirit of killing. As we pray for Ukraine, as we pray for Russia, we need to pray for Putin and he either gets delivered. They say he's got cancer. That's what I've heard on the news, whether it's true or not. He doesn't look well, but I know he's bound by a spirit. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind that spirit. And we say, Lord, loose him or take him off the scene any way you want. Yes. Yes. Brother Walder. Amen. Amen. Well, I stepped away for just a moment. We had many uh, messages. messages that just came, uh, voice messages from Harky, right from the heart of uh, where everything is happening. And um, I can say this is amazing to hear from the pastor there. He says, we learn to be thankful to God for every day, for what we have for that. We are alive and we live one day at a time, learning to be thankful in all circumstances. He says the sky was just uh, uh, lit up like fire for a period of time. And you could imagine with the bombing that's taken place there. He says the Central Park and the older historical buildings, it is sad to see their destruction. But he said uh, he is so thankful for the finances that we have sent. They've been able to buy uh, supplies, food, food that will, uh, if the electricity gets shut off again, that uh, will not spoil. But they've also been able to get some meat that they could use right away. He says it's just amazing how much they were able to buy uh, for the people they are feeding in the bomb shelters um, they sometimes will come upstairs and, and feed them there. Uh, sometimes they have to go down into the bomb shelter, depending on circumstances. And so uh, uh, God is protecting. God has protected them. I received a short video. I don't know if I mentioned that. They had, uh, well, it's night there, and they had communion. gathered the people. They had a communion service there, uh, even in the dark. But they are worshiping God. They're standing strong. There is panic. He says many, uh, he says thousands fled to the train station to try to leave. Uh, and bombing began at the train station. So people went hid under the, um, uh, in the, uh, there's, they have in their train stations, these passages underground between platforms. So people all took off of, from the platforms for an hour and a half or so hiding underneath. Fortunately, the train station was not hit, uh, but people obviously uh, panicking and trying to get out if they can get out. Um, And of course, it's dangerous that the train doesn't get hit as well. So um, it it is, um, uh, things are happening hour by hour, but he is staying there other pastors we're working are there. They stayed there. They did not escape. They're there with the people. They said, we're going to care for God's uh, sheep. We're going to help the community. They said, I'm just so overwhelmed seeing the love among the people, the community coming together, helping one another, bringing what little they have in their cupboards to share with others so that they could 
live one more day so they could feed the children, so they could feed those that are most in need. So uh, your help that you're sending is helping. It is getting there. And they are immensely, immensely grateful. Again, there are organizations, there are ministries that are working to help those that are escaping to other nations that are in other nations surrounding there. That is important. That is good. They need help. But we're trying to help those most in need, those that are in the cities that are being bombed day in, day out. It's been going now about a week. Um, and um, But God is using, and, and they're seeing uh, miraculous interventions of God, sometimes in the small things, sometimes in the larger things. Yesterday, um, they were without uh, drinking water. Half the city of Harka was without water. So they had to go and get uh, uh, spring water and well water, unfiltered. But he said, that's all we had. Um, so things changed uh, moment by moment. They're staying faithful to God. They're continuing to encourage people. And you can imagine that the stress, the psychological impact of this war that is having, especially on children, is uh, horrific. Um, one of the pastors said, you know, I just cannot imagine um, what's in the minds of the, some of the children, because right before their eyes, they've seen shootouts, they've seen people killed, and psychologically, it is just very damaging. One pastor uh, said, we're caring for ref in another city that we're also helping the city of Poltava. They're taking in refugees from Kharkiv, housing them in the church and the churches there. And he says, you know, there one mother came with an autistic boy and he's just moving, just swinging himself in bed. He's just, uh, it's just so sad to see this young boy who had seen all this uh, trauma, this, uh, the, the, these killings, the shootings. So keep praying, pray for the churches, pray for these pastors Pray for those that ha are fleeing and trying to save their lives, their families. Some of them are leaving with just what's on their back and their ID documents. And that's how they're showing up in other cities. So in some of these other cities, uh, the pastors we're working with, this is within Ukraine. They themselves are under attack, but perhaps in a lesser form. So refugees are coming to them. They're helping them, plus helping their own congregations. So this money that we're sending is feeding people in the community, not just the church. It's feeding people in need. Uh, in some cases, uh, they bring help to hospital workers, frontline workers, and uh, people that uh, you know, basically the first responders in their cities who uh, uh, are trying to protect the people, trying to help the people. They're trying to uh, also take care of them with food uh, in this very difficult situation. Uh, the situation changes. Uh, Kherson, we are getting information that is uh, under complete Russian uh, um, uh, domination, but uh, things change. One uh, hour, uh, we have one news, and then things change again. And uh, we have seen some... Uh, dramatic interventions of God, because in the natural, Ukraine should have fallen already, but it is by God's grace and God's intervention that we <laughs> have seen uh, not only a resilience of the people, but it is an answer to prayer. Ukrainians are people of prayer. Um, almost 90% of the nation, they identify as Christian, and mind you, many of them as uh, Orthodox Christians, but the evangelical churches in um, Ukraine are strong. They've grown exponentially since the 19, early 1990s. We've helped to plant many churches there, as well as in Russia and other nations there. Brother Tony and Sister March have been very much involved. 
in um, uh, planting churches, helping uh, the startup churches to get on and get going, and even providing buildings for many of them. So it really is heartbreaking when you see what is happening, mm -hmm. when you're hearing these people. Um, one night, uh, 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 the pastor said, you know, I'm going to say goodbye. I don't know if we'll make it through this night. This was in Kharkiv. Uh, next day he was upbeat. Well, they didn't know the bombing was so severe. They did not, they do not know. Each day they are thankful that they have breath in their lungs, that they're still alive, and they're thankful for what they have. It may not be much. The city looks like it is a war zone. Much is being destroyed, even of historical uh, buildings, uh, beautiful buildings. Uh, but God can rebuild all that. And my prayer is that what the devil intended for evil, God will turn around for good. I believe that the, uh, the revival that is yet to come, where they have been, uh, they've had revival, they've been in kind of a state of revival since uh, the 90s. But I believe even a greater revival a greater move of God is coming, and it is going to come, and no army, no nation is going to stop the move of God. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It is his church, it is, and he will, he will um, uh, strengthen his church there. He's going to build his church, and we're going to see a great move of God. It is sad that it's going through this process, but I believe that God's plans will be fulfilled as they always are. Uh, Brother Tony, Sister March, or Nina. <laughs> Nina. Well, um, I was just thinking, maybe I was thinking, Brother Tony, if you could pray um, for the ministers and and pastors that are in these bomb shelters, that God would encourage them and give them strength to continue to do what yes. they're doing so that they don't get discouraged and feel hopeless, but that they feel the surrounding presence of God there. Amen. Let's, let's agree on that together. Yes, Father, you. in the name of yes. Jesus Christ, we bring every one of these yes. men and women, women of God, Lord, in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Lord, we ask that you strengthen them, not only physically, but you would strengthen them spiritually. For the battle is really not theirs. The battle is uh, the Lord's. He is the one who fights for us. And Lord, I pray that you will encourage them and encourage us as we pray for them. Uh, Lord, that we might be the spiritual helpers that held the hands of Moses up, that we might hold their spiritual hands, that they may be strong in the faith. Lord, even though there be bombs falling round about them, Lord, they would be encouraged of the Lord. They would be encouraged by the Spirit of God. Let a strong strong anointing yes. come upon yes. them. Let the fire of God and Lord put your divine angels round about them. And not only of the ministry, but amongst your people. Lord, we pray for all the Ukrainians, but especially those of the household of faith that, that they may share that they may share their faith that, that Lord in those uh, in those fallout shelters uh, Lord I pray their revival will break out amongst them and Lord I pray for the Russian soldiers uh, you see some of them have even put holes in the gas tanks so they can't continue on. Lord, I pray that revival will come amongst those Russian soldiers, that they'll lay down. Lord, they'll lay down their weapons. 
Lord, in Jesus' name. Or if they shoot, they'll shoot in the ground and shoot where there is nobody. Lord, I pray for those missiles that are let go. Lord, that may be, may be shot by those that have that Nazi, that, that killing spirit, that demonic spirits of hell. Lord, let their ammo, let their bombs, let their uh, articles of destruction, Lord, go where it will cause no harm in the name of Jesus. We bind the enemy. We thank you for the miracles. We thank you for our dear brother there with his brethren where the five bombs flew landed right near them, but oh God, oh God, you kept them and you can keep them. And I believe there's going to be many testimonies coming out of this, Lord. Lord, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day, but Lord, we believe that you have all things in control. And though we cannot understand it, we know that all things work together for good uh, to those that are called to the purpose of God. Uh, and in the name of Jesus, some way, somehow, you're going to turn this to good. Uh, Lord, let there be such a revival sweep yes. over Ukraine, yes. over Russia, over mm -hmm. all those countries that surround it uh, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, let all those that have that demonic spirit that are uh, encouraging, that are agreeing with uh, Putin, Lord, uh, let them be convicted. Let them be tormented until they yield their lives to Christ. Lord, I know that sounds harsh because you're the God of love. And as we heard those wonderful things that Marge read here a few moments ago about your love. Lord, yet in the midst of this, in the midst of this, we bind all those spirits of hell and we loosen. And Lord, we believe that your ministers are going to shine like angels in wherever they are. And Lord, for the food that's being purchased, Move upon hearts to give, Lord. Uh, and Lord, let those ministers or whoever's purchasing uh, the food, uh, yeah. Lord, let them get bargains. Uh, let their let the prices be low for them so they can take something. Uh, and Lord, let it be expanded. Let it be extended. Uh, let it be multiplied uh, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I believe that you're speaking. Yes, Lord, you're speaking to hearts to give. Lord, there's people watching this, Lord. I know you're speaking to them. Let them be. Yes, Lord. Let them be faithful to do what you tell them to do. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I know Marge and I. Lord, we're going to do all we can. We're going to do what you Yes, Lord, we are going to do what you put in our hearts to do, yes. not what we can, because we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. Yes. But Lord, as you speak yes. to our spirits, yes. we want to be obedient. Oh, yes. Lord, his one life will soon be passed. Only the things that are done for Christ will last. And we yes. know, Lord, to do things for you. We yes. do it to, to your yes. children. We yes. do it to your children. Yes. And as we've done it to the least of these, we have done it to you, Lord. Lord, if we give a glass of water in your name, if we give a piece of bread, Lord, we're doing it to, for you as we give to our brethren. For we are of the family of God. We are of the yes. children of God. Through nothing we have done, but through what you have done. We have called upon your name for salvation. We have received you into our hearts and lives. We have believed that you are Lord. And because we are your children, 
we know, Lord, that you can speak to our spirits. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Walter Nina, God bless you. Amen. Amen. And if you want to uh, uh, give, uh, you can do that through our web uh, site. Just go to Global Vision Ministries dot org and uh, press the donate button specify ukraine 100 percent will go there and uh if you you could give through paypal you could give through givelify if you are in the u.s uh you could use givelify or paypal if you're in another country use paypal and um, if you want to send a check but just let us know that you're doing that so that we are um, if we can, we'll try to advance that to, to them because these needs are urgent to buy the supplies while they can find supplies and while we still have the means to get the help to them to buy those supplies. So we're, again, we're not saying this out of uh, Ukraine, this going into Ukraine. Uh, there are ministries and organizations working with the refugees uh, outside of Ukraine on the borders. We're working with the people in the cities that are there. They are continuing to minister despite the bombing, despite the attacks constantly. It's going to them. They're buying food, uh, finding supplies, food, water, some basic medicines, very basic necessities to survive these days. Brother Tony, uh, go ahead. Uh, let me point out two things. One thing is, Know them that labor among you. These yes. are people that you know, I know. We know these are good yes. people. They're not yes. putting it in their pockets. They're going to use it for what they, they have need of. And then mm -hmm. second, uh, I don't know if it's, I know that you've been able to send money over there without being charged. Uh, it, do you still have that access? Are they still permitted to banks? We do. The, I spoke to our bank and they said they will help us to, uh, uh, and, and they will remove those uh, wire charges that we Praise have. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, because Amen. that is one of the quickest ways we're able to do it. We're directly wiring uh, funds and we're using other means as well. But that is uh, the, in some cases, that's the only and best way to do it. And I want to give a shout out to those uh, in the UK, our colleagues in the UK, uh, Ken and uh, Graham, for uh, also stepping up to this challenge and uh, help, uh, helping from your end. And uh, I've, uh, I know that on behalf of the church in Ukraine, the believers, the pastors we're talking about, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for our colleagues, our friends in Canada who also um, are, are doing what they can. And we know that uh, uh, it is not easy, but we're all in this together. Part of the body of Jesus Christ suffers. The whole body suffers. This is part of the body of Jesus Christ. And I know that some people uh, say, well, you know, there's some issues there, you know, they start getting into the political stuff. Let's forget all the political stuff. There are people suffering. There are children being killed. There are uh, men, women, innocent people being killed. Uh, we cannot just stand by and, and discuss uh, uh, politics here. L let's look at the humanitarian side. Uh, let's not be heartless. Let's help those who are needy, those who are in, have through no fault of theirs. They did not seek this war. They did not ask for this war. They did not do anything to aggravate this war that came on them. They were overpowered, over, uh, you know, uh, uh, more manpower, more, uh, many more guns and tanks and airplanes, and yet uh, they're resisting, they're standing, uh, but we're trying to help on the humanitarian level right now to those people, to feed them, to help shelter these people who have been, who have had to flee. And some of these cities, they've had, their apartments have been blown up. Some of the people are afraid even of their 
apartment has not been hit, that it could be hit because they, some of them have been hit. And so they come into the center of the city. They come into these bomb shelters. What are those shelters? Well, some of them are subway stations underground. Some of them are just basements under buildings. Well, those buildings could get hit too. So uh, um, we're doing what we can. We will <laughs> continue to do that. And we're sending it to pastors, as I said, whom we know, whom we've known for years, whom we stayed with, we've eaten with, we've stayed in their homes, we've ministered together, and uh, these pastors are not getting rich or anything like that. They're out there in the trenches, and I, I could show you pictures literally in the trenches, literally in damp, cold basements, uh, taking care of people finding blankets, running out to find blankets, uh, uh, mattresses, whatever they can risking get, their life risking their out. life. So the pastor went out to do that when these bombs fell around him and, and other pastors who were with him by a miracle of God. Uh, uh, none of those bombs exploded, thank God. So uh, while we can, we need to do it. The need is right now. So you can send it by check to Global Vision Ministries, PO Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. If you're doing it that way, and you could let us know that you're doing that, we could try to advance, if we can, those funds right away so that the funds get there immediately. Um, uh, for an immediate donation, go to our webpage, globalvisionministries.org, press donate, specify Ukraine, whether it's by check or by um, by uh, uh, by way of the internet, uh, by our webpage. And uh, you can use PayPal or Givelify if you're in the US. Uh, PayPal will work anywhere in the world, to my understanding. And I would just say this, we've had response from different uh, nations, uh, including Germany, the UK, and even Congo. Congo. Someone in Congo heard of this need and sent a donation. And let me tell you, um, that means so much. Just to see, we know that you're not in a wealthy country. You have your own needs, and yet you want to help the poor and destitute in another nation in this hour. So may God bless you. May God recompense you. And know that we will try to continue to communicate uh, updates. Um, some things uh, we have to be very careful what we post uh, with, with the fluid situation, pastures. Uh, have a target on their back, particularly ones who leave, uh, lead some of these efforts of rescuing people and helping people. We don't want to put a bigger target on their backs. And so we communicate information to you as we can, but we try to, uh, with some things we have to withhold. Uh, and, um, and I think you can understand that, but know this, that your prayers are working, your prayers are being answered and in more ways than you realize. And uh, in the fog of war, it's difficult to, uh, uh, to, to, to sometimes see the, the picture. Sometimes you get a glimpse here and a glimpse there. Uh, there's that bigger picture, but someday we will know uh, in more detail all the, uh, the ways in which God had miraculously sustained people, protected okay. them. And one of the messages uh, that I received is that they were able to buy um, a seven, uh, just today or yesterday, I think today uh, or yesterday, $1,700 worth of food. We sent, uh, we've been sending money there and more is going there and in one time. And this is just, he says, it's just a miracle how much we were able to get for that. He says a massive amount of food to feed the people and, and things that will last beyond a day or two in case the electricity goes out. So non-perishables, uh, uh, non but for the immediate use, they've also been able to find some meat, which is hard to do in the circumstances right now. So Amen. Um, Amen. Well, what comes to mind is a song that we used to sing a long time ago. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, uh, you might, I might say this to Russian people. Maybe you're not in Russia, but you have, uh, you have uh, immigrated somewhere else 
and you are sad of what's happening in Ukraine. You know this is not right. Well, this would be a chance of protesting that you're against the war by helping the Ukrainian people. This is an opportunity. Uh, I can I can vouch for Walter and Nina. I don't think you could uh, send it to anyone uh, that's in the ministry doing what uh, preaching the gospel that would be any more secure, uh, any more honest. So if you are Russian, why don't you uh, protest a little bit by helping the Ukrainians? And I don't know if they can get money out of Russia into Ukraine. If they can, and you're hearing this in Russia, and I know there are people in Russia that do hear this, and uh, why don't you give? It is a way of protest. I mean, some of you mothers over there and fathers that got sons that are on the front lines mm -hmm. uh, fighting against Ukraine. Why don't you protest? And why don't you give? That's one way. Well, if you can go on the street and protest if you're over there, that's fine too. Uh, but don't don't get sent to Siberia. Well, you can go to Siberia and preach the gospel. That'd be all right. But uh, and anyways. And show your love by action, by your hands and your feet being uh, messengers of God. Show your love and walk in the way. Be followers of the Lord as dear children and walk in love and do what you can because it's going to count for all eternity when you help someone in their destitute condition. Amen. Amen. So Amen. protest. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I want to say this, that um, we do get occasionally, not more than occasionally, people, well, what about praying for Russia? We are praying for Russia. Yes. Uh, we have planted churches in Ukraine, throughout Russia, some in also in Belarus, Armenia, Georgia, we're, we're not uh, uh, just praying for Ukraine, yes. but right now the bombs are raining on Ukraine, on our brothers and sisters, and we cannot just stand by and just talk about it or ignore it. We need to do something, and we could do something very important by praying. That is so crucial, but we could also do something tangible yes. by financially helping those who are destitute. And if you want to support through other ministries, God bless you. But we're helping right now the pastors who are in the cities that are being bombed, that are being attacked. And we're helping them to help the people in those cities to care for the for some of them are wounded, you know, uh, care for the wounded, care for the um, for those who are uh, have lost what they had, who have fled from the apartments, who have fled from the outskirts of the city, are in bomb shelters in uh, in central parts of the city. We're helping those that have moved from one city to another city that's less bombed, but it's also under attack. Uh, uh, you know, it's just so many things are happening there, but we are helping to people that are there, not the ones that are fled. They need help too, no question about it. And I know there are many aid agencies trying to help them uh, on the uh, Polish side, maybe Slovakia and other places, mm -hmm. even in Germany, I'm sure they're going everywhere now. Uh, maybe even Romania, but uh, we're helping the ones in there. And so uh, pray, pray for Harkiv, pray for Herson. Herson is a very tough situation because they're now under occupation. Um, how will that pan out? Pray for the church there. Pray for the Jewish people in Ukraine. My understanding is that several thousand have now fled the country to Israel, and it is in the Herson region where um, we know that people were already, pastors were making contingencies to protect uh, Jewish people should persecution arise against them under these circumstances. I don't see the persecution coming from Ukraine because they have never, uh, you know, they've been living freely there. The president of Ukraine is Jewish. Um, so there isn't that, uh, I know propaganda is out there trying to paint uh, Ukraine and Ukrainians as being Nazis. 
Um, I, I don't know where that comes from. And I'm sure there could be some uh, person someplace they found that may have those uh, tendencies, as you probably can find in America or anywhere else in the world. But uh, right now in Ukraine, we're talking about the churches. They love the Jewish people. They love uh, everyone. And they're reaching out. They have been reaching out to the nations mm -hmm. in missions in Africa, in Latin America, and throughout the Soviet Union. And I want to say this, the Ukrainian people do not hate the Russian people. There are ethnic Russians living in Ukraine, and they don't know why Russia has been. He said, we were fine here the way we were, and we didn't need anybody to come try to rescue us. We're here. here. We want to be here. And there are ethnic Ukrainians living in Russia. There are a lot of people intermarried. The people as a whole do not hate each other. The devil's trying to cause this hatred, this animosity um, between them. Right. And we need to be careful that this doesn't filter into the church because in, uh, you know, as, as, as uh, uh, frustrations are vented, uh, then people began to begin to get uh, uh, upset with each other. We cannot allow that to happen. We need to stay in love, help the needy, uh, pray against the demonic spirits that are trying to destroy yeah. God's people that are trying to destroy this nation right now. But you have to look at it and what does this nation represent in that region? Freedom, it represents religious freedom, it represents uh, many gospel churches, and it represents a future powerful move of God that the devil does not want to be unleashed. But the opposite is going to happen. And that revival is going to hit not just Ukraine, it's going to go all over Russia and all over that part yeah. and the whole world, I believe. So uh, let's keep believing. Let's keep praying. Uh, keep giving as you can so that we can help these pastors there to feed the poor and the destitute in this hour right now. They're comforting people, they're praying for people, and uh, we are there with them. When I tell them that we're praying for them, it just means so much to them because it lets them know that we have not forgotten them. It lets them know that they are not mm -hmm. alone. And when these finances come, they're just so thankful uh, because they have no way of getting things without that help right now. So thank you again. Do, do uh, what you can, uh, but keep praying. Keep praying. God is answering prayer, and uh, God will continue to answer prayer. Uh, Tony or Marge or Nina, do you have anything else to add? We've gone over time here, but yeah, it's okay. Um, uh, but Tony, there may be someone who tuned in and uh, people will watch this later, um, uh, not just now, and they don't know Jesus as their savior. Would you lead them um, wherever they are in the world watching? I'd like to first invite then uh, the Russian people uh, that may be watching that do not know. Maybe you're Orthodox, maybe you're Catholic, maybe you're uh, nothing. Maybe you've, been, maybe you've been even an atheist. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, what matters is whether oh, you know yeah. Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. Yeah. He died on the cross, not just for a few people. He died for everyone. He died for you. He took your place. He took my place on the cross. If we were to get justice, every one of us would be crucified. But he loved us. Yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You believe in God? You believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Well, you're more than halfway there. Now you need to just receive him into your heart and life. And you can do it. You can do it right now. Close your eyes. Pray this prayer. Why don't you lay your hand on your heart? You know, you hear that heartbeat, feel that heart beating. And it's just like the Lord knocking on the door of your spirit. He wants to come in. He says, if you open, he would open. If you would open your heart, he would come in. Close your eyes. Repeat this prayer. Marge will pray it with you. 
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you see, today we have been talking about praying for the Ukrainian people. Lord, you see today that we have been praying for the Ukrainian people. But Lord, there are people all around the world that need to know Jesus Christ. But Lord, there are people all around the world who need to know Jesus Christ. As a personal living Savior. As a personal living Savior. And Lord, I pray for those right now. And Lord, I pray for those right now. I pray for those individually. I pray for those individually. For all those who are at this moment. For all those who are at this moment. Saying, Lord Jesus Christ. Saying, Lord Jesus Christ. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my personal Savior. Be my personal Savior. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. I confess my sins. I confess my I sins. Ha- I am a sinner. I am a sinner. But Jesus. But Jesus. You paid for it. You paid for it. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me in your precious blood. Wash me in your precious blood. Write my name. Write my name. In the book of life. In the book of life. And Lord. And Lord. With your help. With with your help from this moment from this moment i'm going to live for you i'm going to live for you i'm going to confess i'm going to confess that jesus christ that jesus christ is my lord and savior is my lord and savior i am not going to be ashamed i am not going to be ashamed to say that i am a child of god to say that i am a child of god thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus and with your help and with your help, I'm going to live for I'm you. I'm going to live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you have prayed that prayer and have sincerely prayed it, then God is doing his part. He's forgiving you. He has forgiven you if you prayed that. He has written your name in the book of life. Now, there's something you need to do to grow in the blessing of God. One, quickly, talk to God every day. How? When you pray, that's talking to God. And that's what you need to do every day. Even if you don't, you say, I don't know how to pray. Well, get up in the morning and and say, good morning, Lord. Help me with this day. And you'll find your conversation will grow because then he needs to talk to you. And how does he talk to you? Two ways. When you read the Bible, especially the Gospel of John, uh, that's, that's God speaking to you. That's God's word. And he'll speak also to your spirit. He'll take that word and use it to speak to you when you have a question. He'll help you. And third, to grow in the Lord, get involved in a Christian fellowship, a church that believes the Bible, a church that has love one for another. No church is perfect, but you need to be part of a fellowship and grow in the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And if you are sick, if you are in need of healing, we want to pray for you. Father, there are those who have lost loved ones. There are those who are suffering Lord, uh, from COVID, from the effects, after effects of COVID and other sicknesses. Father, in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, I command that sickness to leave. I command that pain to leave. And I speak healing. I speak peace into the heart. I speak blessing. I speak shalom in Jesus' name. Receive the healing of God right now in your body, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind. Begin to praise God, receive the touch of God, pain be gone in Jesus' name, lungs be healed right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you are touching people, I thank you you are healing people, The Lord God, we pray that you would heal emotionally those that have been traumatized by this war in Ukraine and surrounding regions. Lord God, we pray that your peace would fill their hearts, that they would be at peace and at rest in you despite the circumstances, knowing that 
that you have not left them, knowing that you have not forsaken you. them, yes. looking unto you and re being reminded, oh God, that you are the rock, you are the solid rock, and no matter what comes, you are with them. And so, Father, we thank you that you are answering prayer, that you are yes. touching lives, that you're healing people, and Lord, that you are protecting your people in the midst of these trials, tribulations, this war, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we lift up other nations as well. We lift up your uh, pastors and servants, uh, your uh, Lord, missionaries, evangelists, pastors, teachers, prophets, though of the body of Christ, the believers in Nepal, in North India, who need your strength, who need your power, who need your anointing in this hour. Lord, I lift up the pastors, the churches in Cuba. The you would strengthen them, that you would use them in this hour. And Lord God, here for America, we pray for your intervention in this nation. Yes, and we yes, pray yes, that yes, this yes, nation yes, would come yes, to yes, you yes, and yes, seek yes, your yes, face, yes, that this nation would turn from yes, its yes, wicked yes, ways and would once again return to you. So Father, we say your kingdom come, yes, Lord, your, your governance kingdom, come yes, here yes, in America, yes, in yes, Canada, yes, in yes, Mexico. Yes, in Cuba, Lord, in Nepal, in India, Father, in China, in Taiwan, Lord, in Europe, in the United Kingdom, and Father, right now over Ukraine and the entire region, we invite your governance, government, so we invite your kingdom, we invite your rule, and beginning with the hearts of men, may your rule, your kingdom, yes, uh, come yes. into the hearts of men and women and children, and in, in Ukraine, in Russia, in Belarus, uh, in Moldova, and Romania, in Slovakia, in Poland. Oh, God, and send a mighty revival, mighty awakening as people turn to you in this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for those uh, uh, who have, will tune in later. Um, we will try to give you updates as we can. Continue to pray. And let me just mention some specific cities to pray for in Ukraine. Kharkiv, the second largest city, very, very crucial that we pray for them. Kherson on the south, uh, very crucial right now in this hour in that whole region in the south. Uh, Zaporizhia, uh, which is just north of, then of her son, um, and uh, Kiev. Uh, oh, Kiev. Kiev has been, uh, um, of course, bombarded to heavily, heavily with the pray in that God would intervene. He has been intervening, that he will continue to intervene, that God will give strength and the supplies that people need. Uh, they need supplies, and I'm talking about uh, food, water, and, of course, shelter. Pray for those who are working there. Amen. Amen. Well, anything else? Nina, yeah. Tony, or March? Uh, God richly bless you, folks. Thank you for joining us. Share this broadcast, and if you can donate for Ukraine right now, designate that as Ukraine. You can send it by check to Global Vision Ministries, P.O. Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. It's right above me. And, uh, or go to our webpage, globalvisionministries.org, not .com, but .org, and press donate on there. And you can do that online. God richly bless you. And remember, to remember Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is, is the same yesterday, today, today and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen.